Hello, my name is Oscar Mathis. I'm a technical director with General Kinematics Corporation in Crystal Lake, Illinois. This photograph is of our world headquarters in Crystal Lake, which is a northwestern suburb of Chicago, about an hour north west of O'Hare International. We manufacture engineered vibratory process equipment. We have our engineering headquarters in the Crystal Lake facility. We also have state-of-the-art manufacturing, our technical sales group, research and development, testing, warehouse, and inventory. We also have service centers in Germany, China, Thailand, India, and Italy. Today, we're going to be talking about pet coke dewatering applications concerning pit side clamshell, sluice way slurry, and under the drum, all incorporating GKC vibratory process technology. This was an initial test unit that we started in our facility in our laboratory in Crystal Lake. This is a two mass natural frequency piece of equipment. So it was very load responsive. In the video clip, you're gonna see us pour a skip hoist of pet coke that is inundated with water into the dewatering unit. It will convey up an incline. And the process is gonna separate the water which passes through the the watering deck drops into a water pan and then flows in reverse direction by gravity. We capture the dewatered pet coke and a skip hoist at the discharge end and recycle it. This entire unit is only 12 feet long. So in this video, you'll see us dump the obviously very um, high water content shot pet coke into the test unit. You can see it very quickly begins to separate the water very effectively as it conveys up the incline. Discharges into the receiving skip hoist, which in our test lab is then uh, recycled so that we can plot moisture content versus length of run. We took our laboratory equipment after about a year of work where we thought we had uh, all the answers we needed. We took it to the Pabtex facility in Port Arthur, Texas for field testing. And this is where we really began to learn. We were on site at Pabtex for about two years. In this setup, we were simulating a sluice way slurry application where we brought in a, a calibrated flow stream, gravimetrically calibrated flow stream of dry pet coat into a mixing hopper, we brought in water uh, that we added to create the slurry. It discharged into a static sieve uh, where uh, some of the free water was separated and remainder went onto our dewatering conveyor where it was dewatered and then incline, uh, conveyed up a 14 degree incline belt conveyor. In this test work, we ran uh, water contents varying from about 1.4 pounds of water per pound of dry solid to 4.5 pounds of water per pound of dry solid. We also investigated a bed coat from a multiplicity of refineries in the vicinity. This is a video clip of the setup. You're seeing the static sieve, uh, which receives the slurry from the mixing box, uh, separates some of the free water, and then discharges to our dewatering conveyor. So on this side view, this is a water pipe going up to the hopper where we introduce the dry solids, mixing box, static sieve. And the vibratory dewatering conveyor. This is a view of the discharge in. We're going to pan slowly back upstream towards the static sieve. You can see this shot coke is pretty well dewatered. This is only 12 feet of run. You can see we still have a very significant slurry coming off the static sieve. Moisture contents that we obtained at the, the feed end varied uh, order magnitude 30, 35%. Very wet. You'll notice how quickly the water permeates the bed.
Beautiful new glory. This is the one of the two units that were furnished to the Savage operation in El Dorado, Kansas. Both of these units were mobile. Um, the vibratory dewatering conveyor was uh, supported by a, a structure that was mounted on skid steer. And in between cuts, the hydraulically operated system was elevated, the skid steer was actuated, and it traversed to the next drum for the next cut. Uh, simply on uh, rubber pads, on a concrete uh, apron, um, no movement whatsoever. In view of those units, this is the water discharge, and you can see the incline. And we, we convey up the incline, the water separates and then flows in the water pan in a reverse direction to the discharge point. In this view, you see a better close up view of our patented dewatering deck. Um, it took us um, many, many years to develop this, both in our laboratory and then uh, additional modifications at Pabtex. And this is very similar to the current technology employed in our dewatering deck construction. The concept is based upon a piece of equipment we call a V trough. And in this view, you can see the, the V type shape uh, of the conveyor pan. This technology is employed in conveying granular solids up very steep inclines. Uh, to get a patent on the technology, we had to convey a single taconite pellet up a 16 degree incline. As the vibration uh, moves the product on the upstroke, we actually consolidate the bed and it provides a good footing to move the bed forward. On the downstroke or downward motion, we create a partial negative, which creates a suction and helps separate the free water. And this occurs repeatedly as, as the, the, the material conveys up the incline. This is an elevation view photograph of the installation in El Dorado. The feeder breaker is posi uh, positioned directly beneath the drum. It conveys up an incline, feeds the, our dewatering conveyor. We then separate the water. It is discharged and goes into a trench over to the sump. The dewater pet coke is transferred to a telestacker and then eventually yeah, out to the coke yard. Before we uh, installed the equipment at the refinery, we conducted a demonstration for the refinery management so they could see our equipment close up in operation. This gauge block, and you see a one inch gap there, we're conveying 450 tons per hour. We used that, we used a VFD to regulate the speed of the um, belt upstream to maintain a constant flow. You can see that the pet coke is uh, very rapidly dewatered. You can see the water coming off the feeder breaker. Um, again, in more, in typical moisture contents, 30, 35% on our feed in. Very consistent, very uniform movement, very rapid, repeatable dewatering. This is a video clip of the equipment in operation, the feeder breaker, our vibratory dewatering conveyor. You can see the, the dewater pet coat transferring to the telestacker. It's, it's difficult to see the vibratory motion. It's small, but we're actually cr uh, creating quite a bit of uh, acceleration on that bed, more than four Gs. And it does a, an excellent job of separating the free water. This was data collected at the refinery on their data logger. A lot of information on this graph, but we want to point out a, a couple of points in particular. This reddish brown curve, this data represents samples that were obtained at the feed end of a dewatering conveyor, and we're showing the moisture content. And you can see it goes up to, in some cases, an excess of 42%. The blue green curve our points collected at the discharge end of our dewatering conveyor. 
And these samples show the moisture content as it comes off our unit. The average in this uh, installation is 10.5%. One of the surprises we had, uh, kind of scary at the time, was they occasionally have hot coke coming out of the drum that burst into flame. And so that we were conveying uh, burning coke on our unit to protect the downstream belt conveyors. They operate the fire lines. They're adding another 750 gallons a minute of water uh, directly into our feed in. One of, the, one of the requirements of our process performance guarantee was that we would never have avalanche or slide back on the telestacker out in the coke yard. And uh, even with this additional water addition, we've always met that uh, requirement. This is the first of the units that was installed on the Gulf Coast. Uh, this unit is located on a pit and serves multiple drums. And to minimize the load on the bridge crane, it, this unit is mobile. So you can see the dewater conveyor. This is an overhead grid that we'll see in a moment, which receives the charge from the clamshell. This structure is on wheels and it rolls on standard railroad rails along the side of the pit. We dewater it, we crush it. There's a side discharge belt that takes it to the outbound belt conveyor back to the coke yard. In this view, you can see the grid. This receives the pet coke from uh, the clamshell, the pit. These openings are about 18 and one half inches square. The clamshell, as you'll see momentarily, drops the pet coke inundated pet coke into the grid, it passes down to the dewatering deck and we convey it out towards the crusher. This crusher is double roll single stage. In this application, we're dropping the size down from 18 and a half down to about four inches or 100 millimeters. It then discharges onto a belt conveyor. It takes it to the side and tr transfers it to the outbound belt conveyor going back to the uh, coke yard. Because this unit rolled, uh, moved up and down the pit, we had to be able to move or lift, if you will, the side discharge belt so that we could pass in between the bridge crane columns. So this is a pivoting side discharge belt. We'll see that in the operation momentarily. All stainless steel uh, contact, all corrosion resistant fasteners. This is a view of the discharge in of the water uh, to prevent uh, putting uh, dirty pet coke uh, accumulations onto the uh, rails. We bifurcated the water discharge to keep it off of the rails. On this end, you can see the pivoting belt conveyor in its upward position. And this is so the unit can traverse up and down the side of the pit. And then we actually performed these uh, demonstrations for our customer uh, when they were uh, in our shop to, to observe uh, testing. This is a view of the installation on the Gulf Coast. You can see the overhead grid, the pet coke dewatering conveyor, the crusher, and then the side discharge belt. This is the outbound belt going back to the coke yard. In this video, we'll see a classical clamshell removal from a pit contains a lot of water. And our technology really lights the water because it helps spread the pet coke once it's transferred onto our deck, which you'll see momentarily. We like water. The very, very high uh, water content coke spreads very quickly, very uniformly. So the bed depth across the width is very uniform that facilitates dewater. The peg is the uh, clamshell is raised. You can see a lot of water coming out of the, the holes in the bottom. And then it is transferred over to the grid and discharged. And the great benefit of this mobile unit was that the bridge crane did not have to move once they started the, the removal from a cut. All they had to do is go back and forth uh, with the trolley. They did not have to traverse the, the bridge crane. This is another uh, view and overhead, a uh, little bit of a distorted view initially because the fellow taking the, the video clip was walking along the, the side up above the, the bridge crane. Uh, the 
but this gives you an opportunity to see uh, how much water is in the pet coke and how quickly we dewater it. You see the clamshell rising. Get a lot of water. We like the water. Transferring to the overhead grid. That's an 18 and a half inch square opening. That's 11 cubic yards, about 300 cubic feet of uh, inundated pet coke. We'll proceed down the walkway and then view the deck just beyond the downstream side of the grid. You notice how rapidly it dewaters. Another great benefit of this technology is that we receive an enormous surge, 300 cubic feet very quickly but we actually meter its discharge rate right, so that we can prevent overloading of uh, downstream material handling equipment. Definitely these units operate with a VFD, so that can be modulated as the need arises. Notice how dry that pet coke appears, very, very rapid dewatering. And you can see it falling into the crusher. This is the discharge stream coming out of the crusher on that side discharge belt is being transferred to the uh, outbound belt back to the coke yard. This is another view um, of that. You see the see the water coming out of the uh, out of the clamshell that charge. In this view you get the it's a little bit uh, quicker. You get to see how rapidly the morphology changes and appearance changes when it goes from a, a wet to a slurry into a very dry solid. Beautiful, look at that. Looks like it's bone dry. And you notice that we are taking that big surge of 300 cubic feet and we're spreading it out so that we can control the uh, discharge volume going to the downstream uh, materials handling equipment. The system was initially rated for about 550 tons per hour. We demonstrated it initially at the commissioning at a considerably higher magnitude um, for the refinery management, but uh, the basic design was 550. Very, very dry. This is a photograph of the side discharge belt. You see the, de the, the grid, the dewatering conveyor. This is the a structure that funnels the uh, dewater pet coat into the crusher. The crusher transfers the pet coat to this pivoting side discharge belt, which transfers it to the belt when they're going back to the coat yard. In this view, you'll see the dewater pet coat being transferred onto that outbound uh, belt conveyor. You get a close up of the dewatered coat, it looks great. Really great dewatering job. Very uniform discharge. We uh, obtained moisture samples when we're kind of performing a test in our laboratory uh, to determine the uh, residual moisture content versus length of run. This uh, installation. Um, You'll notice that the units here are metric. This installation is in Japan. Um, this is their shot coke. And we are consistently dewatering their shot coke um, in, in about eight meters of length down to 10% uh, moisture content by weight. This is a elevation view of the unit in Japan. This one is stationary. Um, it, it rests on these supports that are uh, anchored to a platform that's about 30 feet above grade. This is the overhead grid assembly. This shows the discharge in coming into the, uh, this is a two-stage double row crusher. We had to reduce the particle size to 50 millimeters or two inches before discharging it to the outbound uh, belt conveyor. 
This is a view of the opposite end. This shows where the separated water uh, that flows by gravity down the water trough in reverse direction of the bed coat. It's collected in this chamber, this is a stationary chamber. This stationary chamber then transfers the separated water to a cylindrical shaped return that takes it back to the sump. One of the things we learned very quickly um, was that every drum typically have some very, very hard lumps. We dubbed them cannonballs. And initially we had some difficulty with damage to our decks. We engineered what we would call impact attenuators that are cable suspended devices that hang beneath the grid. And as these hard lumps fall in between the holes, they impact the attenuator a little slope so that it, it deflects the impact, reduces the kinetic energy of the drop, and then transfers it to the dewatering deck safely without damage. These are cable suspended so they, they can move, and they do move. In this view, you see the end of the uh, impact attenuators, and you'll notice that in between the attenuators, we have what we call impact rails that are under the grid. In case we have a perfectly aligned cannonball that drops squarely in between the attenuators, we uh, install the uh, impact beams to make sure that in those rare cases, any cannonball that, that drops down through would, st uh, would still hit a surface designed for impact and protect the deck. It conveys up the incline and is uh, continuously dewatered. At the discharge of the dewatering deck, we drop into a, this is again, a two-stage double roll crusher where we reduce the, uh, the particle size to about two inches or 50 millimeters. All stainless steel contact. Benefits of GKC's engineered pet coat dewatering technology include no grid plugging, no shoots, no corners to clean or unplug, um, and, and the, the, the grids do not plug. If a lump is retained in the opening, they actually use the clamshell, lower it slowly, lay, lay it on the lump, and push it right through. Works very well. Because we're working with a deep bed of the pet cope, we also mitigate the fines discharge. Remember, on the up motion, we consolidate the bed and the bed serves as a natural filter cake to vines. So we remove much less fines than other technologies. There's no stacking in a pit on the deep pit uh, uh, applications. Water log clamshells are dumped directly into the deep water conveyor where there are no backups. We minimize the personnel requirements because only the bridge crane operators are needed. We control the pet coke flow using a VFD and the natural uh, spreading of the, the basic dewatering conveyor. And um, the dewatering con uh, conveyor controls and meters the discharge flow rate so that we don't inundate or overload downstream equipment. Maintenance history. Um, the original machinery components are in operation for more than 10 years without issue, more than 10 years. Our concerns for deck wear turned out to be totally unnecessary. It is virtually non-existent. After 10 years of operation, if you crawl along of one of these decks, you cannot even perceive any wear. Corrosion resistant fasteners are standard. All contact is gonna be 304 stainless steel. We hot dip galvanized coat any non-contact construction, that is structures outside the pet coat contact area. We have time-tested field proven reliability. So we just discussed the pit side clamshell, the sluice way slurry, and the under the drum dewatering technology offered by General Kinematics Corporation. It is continuous, it's reliable, consistent production performance. Questions.